at the beginning of this year, I started Red Wine Girl Time with someone that I perceived to be a really, really, really good friend. And this person turned out to be much like the weather girl. And so once that dynamic started to change and I recognized it, it was very, very easy for me to pull back. And so when I went through the friendship breakup, um, it was definitely hard. But when you are able to really recognize the kind of friend that you are and the kind of person that you are, it makes letting go of toxic people very, very easy. After months of not speaking, she reached out to me. She reached out to me and she didn't get the, I guess she didn't get the result that she wanted. Um, and so she called herself trying to hurt my feelings by saying that she hopes that one day I aspire to be a better person and not a Barbie doll. And so it's in moments like that that I'm like, it's so important to be able to see people for who they are the moment that they start to change. There are times where people's colors change and the only way that you will be able to recognize the changes in their color the changes in that painting, the changing in that art, is if you know who you are. Red, red wine, red, red wine, only get better with time, only get better with time. Red, red wine, red, red wine, only get better with time, only get better with time, only get better with time. Some girls wonder, other girls whine. Welcome back to Red Wine Girl Time. If this is your first time joining us, please be sure to subscribe. I promise you're going to love this show. If you stumbled upon it, it was made for you. There's a reason. If you are a regular viewer, then it's been a while and I do have a lot of updates for you. So, hey girl, I missed you. Um, today we are going to be drinking Capallo Diamond Collection, and this is a Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, so I picked it up because the bottle was like really, really cute. And then when I read the description, it definitely said that it has, um, it kind of takes on the characteristics of a Bordeaux, and Bordeaux has become my new favorite wine. I replaced Merlot with Bordeaux because we are expanding our palettes and trying different types of wine. Um, so I'm excited to check out this Cabernet and tell you guys how I feel about it. So the last time that we had Red Wine Girl time, um, and if you have been following me on social media, I've been talking a lot about being in a transitional space um, and just making those changes. I think in my last episode, I kind of spoke it into existence that one day I was going to quit my job and just focus solely on my dreams. So I quit my job, moved back to New York City. So Red Wine Girl time is New York City based. Yes, we are in the city in my hometown and I'm so excited for what the future holds for this show. Um, so to bid my farewell to Atlanta, we did a Red Wine Girl time dinner and it was so beautiful so many gorgeous women just sitting in the room drinking wine there was a wine tasting um, we did it at this French style restaurant and it was it was amazing uh, the topic of conversation was how do you like to be valued and so I opened up the floor red wine girl time style after our wine tasting and um, we got to go around the room and discuss what the word value meant to us and how we like to be valued um, just kind of putting ourselves more in the mind frame of acknowledging good behavior, acknowledging happy behavior, and really communicating to people how to keep us feeling good and keep us motivated, and I think that that's so important. Um, so Red Wine Girl Times, I think the, the core mission right now is to help us all build healthier relationships. Um, so, we spent a lot of time last year discussing, oh wait, let me, let me pour myself some wine, first of all. Wow. So in the beginning of the year, we had a lot of conversation about our relationships with men. Um, moving into the new year, I want to start touching more on our relationships with women. I took to my Instagram and I asked you guys, what do you want to hear about as far as the next episode? And so the options were sex, 
or toxic female relationships and I was very, very surprised to see that a lot of people wanted to talk about toxic female relationships. Um, I guess the reason why I was surprised is because like, I didn't grow up with a lot of female friends. I've only recently started to dive into those relationships and so thankfully I'm surrounded by a lot of beautiful women, but that doesn't mean that I'm not exempt of ugly characteristics nor does it mean that my friends or other associates, female associates that I have, have not displayed some ugly characteristics as, as well. Toxic femininity is a thing that we don't talk about a lot um, because I'm trying to be careful with my words, but um, they're, they're, being a woman does come with its own set of perks. And so sometimes people abuse those perks. Um, so that's going to be something that we explore moving forward, but today we are going to talk about five toxic qualities in female friendships, what they look like, how to maneuver through them, or if you should avoid them. But also I'm very big on accountability, so this is not just about, I don't want you to just think about like, oh that might be my best friend, that might be my homegirl, that might be my cousin. I want you to also try to identify some of these qualities within yourself so that you are able to say, hmm, I could pay attention to not behaving like this a little bit more. Sounds good? Awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna do yellow light means slow down, how to communicate and reroute the friendship in a sense, and green means go, why you need to drop them. All right, so we have Eeyore. Eeyore is the depressed friend. Never shares good news with you asks for advice but rarely takes it, and comes off as someone who likes to be miserable. So with Eeyore, um, Eeyore is also the kind of friend who tends to ghost a lot. And if you are Eeyore, if you are someone who is, I think, let me backtrack. We're all always going through something and I think that it's okay to recognize when you need time to yourself when you need time away from people that you love when you don't want to burden people or what what you feel is burdening people with you know like what you got going on I completely respect that however um, Eeyore is not someone who practices healthy communication with people that they love so either you're only sharing negative things that are going on or you're constantly pulling a disappearing act and so when you ghost your friends and call it self-care all you're doing is telling people that they don't matter, that their efforts in your life doesn't really, doesn't really matter, and that can be extremely hurtful. Just remember that the things that you focus on are, it's, and I hate to sound cliche, like law of attraction, but it really is the law of attraction. Like The things that you focus on are the things that are going to continue to revolve around your life. So if you continue to focus on negative things and woe is me and everything is bad and nothing is going my way, then that's the life that you're, that, that you're telling God that you're comfortable in. You're not doing anything to pull yourself out of that. And depression is a real thing. So I definitely, I'm always going to tell, I'm always going to suggest that black women go to therapy because not enough people suggest it to us. Go to therapy, find someone to talk to. We don't want to tell everybody our business because we feel like it's an opportunity for gossip and I definitely understand and respect that. But you need to talk to someone. You need to talk to a professional because if you are going through depression, if you are battling mental health issues, that just speaking to your friends or venting to your friends is not helping you with, then you have to go to a professional um, so that you don't lose the good in you and so that you don't lose the good in the people who do their best to support you, that you're literally just like shutting out. So with Eeyore, there's definitely a, a, a yellow light, like let's slow down moment. I had a moment with, um, with one of my friends where she asked me for advice and for the first time I took responsibility for how I feel every time she asks me for advice or how I feel every time I give her advice. And I was honestly just like, you know what? I love you and if you need an ear, then I am more than willing to be that, but you don't take my advice. So if I'm becoming emotionally invested in the things that you're going through and there's a resolve and you do the absolute opposite thing, not to say that I'm always right, but if you do the absolute opposite thing and you're continuing to be in this hurt space, then that is a space that you choose to be in. And as your friend, I can't participate in that. I can be your ear, I can listen, but I love you too much to keep 
hurting because you're hurting yourself. The weather girl. Always reporting to you who doesn't like you will switch up based on someone else's opinion of you. Okay, boom. How do I put this together? All right, so let's say Jamie and Emily are best friends. Jamie comes to Emily and says, Rebecca said A, B, C, D, E, F, G about you. And I just can't believe that people are saying these things about you. Here's my perspective on that. If you are someone's friend and someone is saying bad things about them, you should be, in, you're, you're in a position, there's no reason for you to come back and tell that person what was said. You wanna know why? Because in that moment, you shut it down. If somebody's talking about my friend, I don't have time to absorb the information enough to go tell my friend that A, B, C, and D was said about her. Because in that moment, I am going to let you know, one, why that's not true. Two, why you shouldn't be participating in that information as someone who's an extension of someone that I love, or an extension of me, and I'm an extension of this person that I love. Um, and we're just not gonna have this conversation again. I'm either gonna set you straight enough that you're like, oh, this is not true, or, oh, I definitely shouldn't come tell her about this. There's no reason why that information should then travel back to my friend, because I handled it. Now, don't get me wrong, there definitely needs to be a moment of like, depending on the severity of the gossip or whatever the case may be, but I really feel like as friends, if you're shutting down people trash talking your friend, like if you're effectively shutting it down, there's no reason to go back to your friend to say this, 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 and that was said about you, especially not repeatedly. So if you have a weather girl as a friend, or if you are the weather girl, um, you need to reevaluate where you stand on those friendships. If the weather girl is your best friend, if the weather girl is your cousin, if the weather girl is your home girl, um, that's someone that you have to be wary of because if people are consistently comfortable talking about you to this person, they're not your friend. I'ma just go ahead and say it. They're not your friends. They're either aiding these rumors, they're egging them on, they're contributing to them, but there's no reason why anyone who loves you can be in a space where people are talking crap about you and it's okay. That's just how I feel. So I just, if the weather girl, not your friend. I've had one of those, bye, no. Judge Judy talks about everyone, especially strangers, when you guys are out and thinks they are the fashion police. Questions all of your decisions and will try to be your voice of reason always. Judge Judy, I feel like Judge Judy is definitely a yellow lights kind of person. Um, it depends on who you are and the kind of relationship that you're used to having. But me personally, it makes me really uncomfortable when someone wants to talk about people all the time. I feel like if you have your own stuff going on, there's no need to gossip about other people. There's no need to talk crap about other people. There's no need to put down other people. Like when you have your own thing going on, when you have your own things going for you, when you have your own things to worry about, there is no mental space to be throwing shade. So Judge Judy is definitely a, a, a slowdown. I don't think there's anything wrong with being the fashion police. We all check other people out, I get it. Um, but the constant need to, oh, I know what it is about Judge Judy, um, where it actually affects the friendship, is that this person also tries to, um, to question all of your decisions and be your voice of reason. And that can really, really put you in an uncomfortable space of not wanting to talk about things that are going on in your life. And if you can't really talk to your friends about good or bad things and like, what what is the point right so like if i can't have conversations with you about things that are going on in my life that kind of limits the friendship so but but when someone is constantly trying to be your voice of reason this is someone who's literally questioning every single decision that you make they are 
almost judging every decision that you make even after you've already made them and that can make you feel a little bit insecure because there's a soft spot in our hearts for our friends and for the people that we love and to a certain extent I don't know y'all confront all y'all want you care about being perceived as successful in the eyes of the people that you love your friends are on that list your parents are on that list your family whoever you decide is your family is on that list your significant other is on that list you do care about being perceived as successful so when someone is judging every decision that you make it makes you feel like you're not doing the right thing or you're not living up to their standards and even if you don't agree with what their standards are there's still a part of that a part of you that's that's a little bit hurt like well damn girl like I was I was good with that choice like I was fine that made me happy so with just Judy um, I would say one of my healthy communication moments with a friend that I felt was like that was that I told them like you know like sometimes I'm just sharing things to share with you I don't need you to be my voice of reason and did that change the dynamic of the friendship a little bit just, just, a, just a smidgen it did um, but moving forward I did feel like whenever I wanted to share things I was able to just share them and not feel like there was a judgment call coming or a hmm but you should have you know so that made me happy the chameleon acts different around men seeks validation by sneak dissing you depending on your age range I definitely feel that women become more important the older that you get and as someone who grew up with a lot of male friends like all my best friends were dudes growing up like I just recently started to establish a, a girl tribe over the past like five years all of my best friends my closest friends have always been males like I've always only had one or two female best friends so now I've been entering a space where I understand how important sisterhood is and how important female friendships are and so I'm definitely here to remind you guys that like Having a girl tribe is so important. Women understand each other differently. I gained a lot of knowledge from hanging out with boys all the time, but the support that you get from women is very, very, very different, and I don't want anyone to be deterred from having female friendships. So with that being said, a woman, a young woman, a girl, I think as a girl that mindset can, you know, you can grow out of that, but if you are a young woman who switches up on her friends, whenever a dude is around if you are the kind of the kind of young woman or the kind of woman who throws other females under the bus in order to be validated by men that's trash that's trash and that's also dangerous behavior um most of the craziness that we've seen on the internet as of recently at least in my experience it always has to do with a jealous female and the chameleon is definitely the characteristics of a jealous female friend um, so you want to be careful with those kind of friendships you want to be able to watch out for those kind of friendships I think that if you if someone does something that makes you feel uncomfortable if another woman does something that makes you feel uncomfortable or if you if you pick up on a comment or if you pick up on a certain action then you address it and you say hey I didn't really like that if it happens again or if they are dismissive to that behavior or if they try to justify doing something that hurt you again that's something to watch out for because that's a toxic friendship again that is someone who is capable of setting you up um, not here for it so last but not least oh last but not least Miss Universe everything revolves around them if you're upset they're likely to be upset about you being upset and the time is spent catering to their emotions and not yours they're usually the victim in a lot of your altercations or disagreements so the thing about Miss Universe is that um, there is often times where the relationship is contingent to how this person feels so whatever you may have going on in your life, the success of our relationship and our friendship 
is solely based on if you feel like being invested, if you feel like being involved in this relationship, if you feel like having healthy communication today. And that can be a very, very, very unfair space to live in if you are on the receiving end of that. I'm gonna just go ahead and raise my hand and say that like, I'm definitely, I've definitely had Miss Universe moments, um, which is why I'm gonna defend <laughs> Miss Universe and say that we're gonna give her the yellow light, just kind of slow down, really, really look at the friendship and work on your communication. One of my best friends, which you guys will meet, her name is Zoe. We went through a good, I wanna say two and a half years of extreme tension. And it's because we are both Miss Universe. Um, and I can say that because it like it's the truth. We are both guilty of that like toxic behavior of expecting for everything to revolve around our emotions instead of addressing what the present issue was. And so a lot of times you would think that we're disagreeing, but we're really saying the same thing. And I think it takes it takes a lot of love to push through that, which we definitely have. How we got through is just that like we knew that individually the women that we were were so valuable. We so many talks, it's like a relationship, but just try like a like it was it's it's a relationship of just trying to like fight through and push through and say no, like what we have is worth it, what we have is worth it, what we have is worth it. And you have to check your egos. Sometimes it's my ego, sometimes it's her ego. So sometimes it's your ego, sometimes it's your friend's ego. Being Miss Universe and the friendship, I know where I picked up that quality is again the fact that like I grew up with mostly male friends. And I think that that's also why I had to start really paying attention to some of my like bad friendship traits when it came to to other women because when when most of your friends are y'all know i love calling myself out um but I've, I've grown so when most of your friends are male so when you are constantly surrounded by people who do their best to cater to your emotions because i was the only female around then you expect that from everybody else so like really sit down and think about what type of value these people bring to your life and how happy they make you and what the friendship means to you it's really just along the lines of is there anything that I could be doing to make this relationship, to make this friendship more successful? I think sometimes people just don't realize that they're being self-centered. And in order to push through that, you have to be able to identify right then and there when the relationship is starting to feel rocky, when you feel like you're not being heard. Know when to say, hey, you know what? Let's step away from this conversation and revisit it. So. To wrap this up, um, those are definitely some strong qualities. I really hope that I explained that properly. I didn't really like plan out this episode. I just felt like you just gotta get in front of the camera and do it so that you can jump back into the swing of things. It's been a few days since I've been back in New York and like my car got towed, U-Haul kept trying me. It has been rough, um, but it just, it was important to me that I was able to at least just like get in front of the camera hopefully i like this i edit it and i use it if not we're gonna do another one it's all right um thank you guys so much for watching um there will be a recap video of the red wine girl time dinner and i have some really really amazing news if you go check out the red wine girl time website y'all so we got a website now go check out the red wine girl time website let me know what you think um and yes thank you guys so much for watching be sure to like rate comment subscribe we will definitely be exploring more toxic female traits but i kind of just wanted to give you guys a brief hey what's up hello um on some quality some 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 traits um to be wary of